This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. Hello. Thanks for downloading Ian Lee's free podcast for free. You may notice this isn't Ian's voice. I could tell you, as he asked me to, that he's doing some glamorous telly job or that he's got a meeting about being the next James Bond or, and this was his favourite one, that Hugh Hefner's jacuzzi's on the blink and he's been asked to provide the bubbles. But the truth is, he's at home in his pants struggling with a particularly tricky level of Mario Kart. So while he decides whether to be Yoshi or Princess Peach, and we all know he's going to go Peach, he's got me, Catherine Boyle, off the news to take up his considerable slack. Typical. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Coming up, you can hear some outrageous threats from Ian. I am going to um, get my television, dig a big hole in the back garden, throw it in, do a wee-wee on it, throw rocks at it, and then smother it with earth. Find out who's making this sound. Exterminate, Ian Lee. Exterminate. And hear what this is all about. <laughs> Sorry? Turn that off. Okay. A bit of respect. So if you like hearing middle-aged men go on and on and on, you're in for a real treat because he went off on one about Doctor Who for two whole days. New Doctor Who. If Stephen Mangan or that uh, lady with the glasses who's on everything, Perkins, Sue Perkins, if either of them become Doctor Who, I'm going to, th- I'm going to sell my television on uh, eBay, the auction site, and never, ever watch television ever again as long as I live. It means that all hope is lost... Give up hope, all ye who enter here, because Stephen Mangan... Right, let's, let's do the Mangan rant, shall we? Here comes the Mangan rant. He's overrated, he's dull, he's not a particularly good actor. He's an adequate actor, he's adequate, but he's not good. He's a poor man, Steve Coogan, with the, the bubble cut, the wet perm, and the busy mouth. He's a poor man, Steve Coogan. There's no need for Stephen Mangan on our televisions. And Sue Perkins, I like Sue Perkins. She's all right. I've worked with Sue. She's nice. No, not Doctor Who. No, we cannot have a lady Doctor Who. We ca- No, we can't have a lady Doctor Who. I'm sorry. This is one of the things. I'll give you your lady bishops. Yeah, go have a lady bishop. Go on. Lady doctors even these days, but not a Doctor Who. I'm not having it. Quite strong about this. It is against the rules. Mangan and Perkins are both likeable. That's their main character trait. They're likeable. You can't have a like... Can we have an old Doctor Who, please? The way it should be. Can we get John Hurt as an old Doctor Who? We can't, we can't have one of these youngsters. One of the newspapers... I'm sorry, Richard and Winslow, you're going to have to, to wait. Unless you want to talk about Doctor Who... Sorry? Blah, 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 blah. I beg your pardon? Oh, I didn't think I was on. You're, I you're on yet. Well, are you, is that, is that, should I make my point? No, don't make your point. Is that is that the noise you make when I'm talking? Well, I didn't think you were... I didn't think I was through yet. I thought it was, I thought it was a general apology on air. Well, no, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a piece and then I go <laughs> to you because you want to talk about pensioners and I was about to be yeah. politely saying, yeah. Richard, you well, may have... Shall I start? No, you shan't start because I'm talking I'm to you. Trump. No, All right. shush. When you're ready, in your own time... Uh, Unbelievable. <laughs> Didn't I ban you once? I'm not still thought. You're just about, just by the, 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 the skin of your teeth. Stop snorting. So, these are the people, Richard, that are in line to be the new Doctor Who. We'll get to your point later, if at all. I could be the Doctor Who. I'm old. Rupert, Rupert Grint is ten to one. Thunderpants. What about me, then? No, not Richard. No, you're not in the running. Oh, all right. Can, do, how do you look in a scarf? Careful. Okay, um, so Rupert Grint from the. Um, Why do you look in a scarf? I, I look good in a scarf, actually. I look very handsome. Really? Although my haircut's too short. Though, how, a scar- how are scarves girly? Well, the way you wear it, Pompey. Anyway, look, I, I came on to phone up about the other thing. When are we going to get round to that? Billy Piper. Really? Yeah, lovely. Would Definitely. She, uh, would she be good as Doctor Who? I don't know about that, but she could have other things, I believe. Mart- that's the character she plays. Martin Freeman. Don't know him. He's the fella from The Office and The Hobbit. Don't watch it. OK. Reese Ifans, the Welsh man in his pants? Oh, yes, I like him. He's hilarious, old Reese. Would he be good as a, as a doctor? I don't know. I don't watch Doctor Who. <laughs> since I saw a Dalek, we jumped behind the sofa. I haven't watched it since. For goodness sakes. All right, well, listen, you, 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 you've called in about pensioners having it hard. 
you, you said earlier about um, pensioners aren't having any other cuts. Well, we are. We're getting we're getting the inheritance tax cut uh, held at three hundred and twenty-five thousand. So when I pop my clogs again, yes. and it won't be too long, I'm sure. Yeah. There'll be less to give to my son and heirs. But you're but again, it's outrageous. But, but Richard, listen, you're not listening to anything I'm saying this morning, and this is why I am. this is why I'm, I'm close to banning you for I think the fifth time. <laughs> you won't be affected by the inheritance tax. Your sons will. Your, your sons will. You won't be affected. Yeah, so of course it's my money, and of course I'll be, I want my be, money to go where I want my money to go. You'll be so dead. It doesn't, it doesn't mean the government can have forty percent of everything over three hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. I can't get a word. I can't get a word in edgewise, and I believe it's my show. Richard, it's it, you'll be dead. So what? Just because I'm dead, you can't come and rob me. Take the pennies off my eyes. Oh, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of pennies, we'll have them as well. I'll tell you what, the, the, what, one thing is, it means my show will run a bit smoother. He bans out Richard every week, and every week he still gets him on. Personally, I think they should just kiss and get it over with. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Ian's Doctor Who rant continued. You can't have a woman Doctor Who. No, you can't do it. It doesn't work. You've got the vote. You're almost earning the same as us. You want to be Doctor Who now? No, we might also have have a Lady James Bond, for goodness sake. Doctor Who's a bloke. He's a bloke. Doctor, it's there. Oh, no, no, you can have Lady Doctors as well, can't you? Well, Justin Daly has been looking into this, haven't you, Justin? Exterminate, Ian Lee. Exterminate. Good morning, Ian. You well? I don't understand why you were just doing um, a Woody Allen voice <laughs> when I think you meant to be doing exterminate, exterminate, oh, that's kill actually, the dealy. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Yeah. I'll give you one. I love Richard as well. Oh, but you know, who, extra, who, who extra, lovely? exterminate. I've got to exterminate. I'm Woody Allen as a... Du- it doesn't work, Justin, for good. Have you ever seen Doctor Who? Um, I'm not a big fan, I have to be honest with you. Um, sci-fi nonsense, as far as I'm concerned. Wow, um, controversial. I, yes, not a big fan of it at all. But, of course, a lot of talk about this new Doctor. Could it be a lady? You're offended by this. Yes. A lot of people are as well. I've been in Hemel Hempstead asking people how they would feel if we had a female doctor for the first time, and this is what people had to say. Hang on, sorry, you actually went out and asked this question? Yes, absolutely. Wow. Bill, you love Doctor Who. How would you feel about seeing a female doctor? Would that offend you? It wouldn't offend me. Um, I would uh, much prefer a male actor playing the part purely on the basis that if you start having sex gender changing, uh, particularly with the doctor had a granddaughter, uh, does that mean his granddaughter Susan would become a male, Ooh. played by a person like Ross Kemp? <laughs> and how... Um, but it's science fiction, so I suppose anything can happen. Yes. But uh, that's my reasoning. You've taken this answer very seriously. If there was a female doctor, and be honest here, would you turn it off or would you give it a try? I would always give it a try. Definitely. OK, this is a very personal question. Sorry for asking this, but our listeners, I'm sure, are desperate to know. You're such a Doctor Who fanatic. You've been watching it since 1972. Are you single? No. <laughs> In fact, my wife arranged for a Dalek to appear at our wedding reception. This is just getting weird now. <laughs> <laughs> how great was that for you? It was a, a, a big surprise. It was fantastic, because this was back in 2003 when, when I got married yeah. and Doctor Who wasn't on the television back then, so there was children didn't know what it was. Mm. Children who'd never seen a Dalek before. Yeah. Never hid behind a sofa. Oh, come on, give us your Dalek impression, come on. I'll, I'll turn away, I'll turn away. Give us your Dalek impression, I'm listening. Exterminate, you will obey us. Let's exterminate this conversation. Rita, just before I start, you tell things the way they are, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah do, yeah. Absolutely. So, should we have a female doctor or... Is that just wrong? What do you think? No, I think you should have a female doctor on there. Well, I just think cause it's like racism, isn't it? If you, if, you, you know, just having what an ordinary, like you say, for doctor, I just think there should be because it's sort of like, it, well, it's like as if you're being racist, isn't it, against a woman mm. being on there, isn't it, really, isn't it? Yeah. That's how I look at it. I think, Justin, excuse me yeah. if I've got this wrong, I, I, I think mm. that racism against women is called sexism. <laughs> I think so. I think. Do you know the best thing about this feature? Doctor Who fans, none of them, none of them are normal people. You've uh, heard two there, no, come on. I'm you not can't having, say they're no, normal people. No, I'm not having that, Justin. They both sounded like delightful, yeah. uh, <laughs> wonderful people that I could happily spend an evening with. I'd love yes. to go around and watch Doctor Who with that bloke or that woman. It's racism that 
that if we don't have a female doctor, and secondly, the man had a Dalek at his wedding yeah. and was doing Dalek impressions, talking about sex changes, what would happen? Yeah, these people are totally normal, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Hey, my dad stole a Dalek once. Did he really? Yeah, we had uh, years ago, when I was about seven years old, my dad, we lived on a council estate in Slough, my dad said, come round to the lock-up garage, what's going to show you, kids? So I, uh, all right, what is it? We opened it, there was a Dalek in there! <laughs> oh. You see, we're living the dream, Dealy. Were you scared, though? Uh, yes, I was scared. Yeah. Can, I, can I make a personal observation about you? you? And I've, yeah. I've known you for about eight months now, and I, I think I can say this without offending you. You literally have no soul, do you? What do you mean by that? You're, you're cold, you're callous, you're heartless, you're soulless. No. You don't get any of the things that bring joy to life, Justin. That is not true. That is not true at all. I don't know where you're getting that impression from. When was the last time you experienced joy? Uh, last time I experienced joy was probably, um, let me think, it was um, probably a couple of weeks ago, um, right. over the football. There you go. You've answered my question, Justin. We'll speak to you later on. Doctor Who, lady. It can't It can't happen. I swear, to, if, if Sue Perkins or A.N. Other Lady becomes the Doctor, I am going to um, get my television, dig a big hole in the back garden, throw it in, do a wee-wee on it, uh, but throw rocks at it, and then smother it with earth, and never, ever watch the infernal thing again. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. This is Ian Lee. On BBC Three Counties Radio. An audit undertaken at Luton and Dunstable Hospital in the first three months of this year has highlighted problems with procedure whilst discharging patients. Among the failings found by the report were two patients being sent home with cannulas still in their arms. Ouch. A patient with dementia being sent home without the family being made aware. A patient discharged without a letter of medication. Well, the concerns raised in the audit are currently being addressed and the hospital is in the process of hiring nine more discharge officers. Joining me now is Karen Ward, Director of Operations at Luton and Dunstable Hospital. Morning, Karen. Good morning, Karen, Ian. Th- these are big problems, aren't they? How do they occur in the first place? I think we're really keen to learn from any incidents that we have. Um, and discharge procedures are, are something that are really quite complicated Just to get it into perspective for everybody, we discharge about 3,000 patients a month, and this audit showed an average of three discharge-related issues every month. Now, I don't want to kind of undermine that, that three is still three too many, and we're working really closely with... A a patient being sent home with dementia without the family being made aware. Listen, the other 99.9% may get away fine, but, but for that person and that family, that's not good enough. How did that happen? I think you're right, it's not good enough. And in that case, the family were aware they were going home. It was the timing that was an issue. But I, what I don't want to do is kind of get drawn into the individual cases. Well, how, but how does it happen, though, Karen? The, the, these cases are significant. How did that happen? Discharge is really, really complicated. There are lots of organisations involved and lots of things that need to happen in the right order. Um, So for some people it's getting the equipment into their home, knowing the time that the carers are going to be there, lining that up with getting all their medications ready. And how did that not happen in this instance? How did a patient with dementia get sent home without the family being made aware? As I say, there's a significant number of discharges. OK, and, and they, didn't very, this, they didn't work in this didn't work so, in this instance. So so how did that happen? And I think... What, you need to know how it happened so that we can prevent it happening exactly, again, don't we? So, so how did it happen? That is exactly the point of why we've done the audit. OK, and We're what working, did the audit show about this case? Well, I, it's, I can't really get drawn into individual cases because of issues around kind of con- confidentiality. But what I can assure you is... The issues have been investigated and that we are working really closely to actually understand. Because what we have to do is understand where things go wrong. It's not necessarily about who did it or why it happened. It's getting to that why did it happen. Okay, well, why why did it happen? Obviously, they're not. Why did it happen? Oh, that's around communication. A lot of these issues are around getting things done at the right time okay. with the right people. And, and things like our discharge officers have been a real bonus. They've really been able to support the doctors and nurses but on the ward. Obviously not in this instance, have they? No, and that's why we're looking at the time that the discharge officers are on the ward and whether actually we've got enough of them. I'm, I'm, because... I'm really desperate to find out, and I know you, you, you can't be too specific, but for those people who use this hospital uh, uh, and will be curious about this and maybe slightly concerned, 
how could... I, you, you've not explained the failings in the system that allowed someone with dementia to be sent home without their family being told. How could that go wrong? That, that seems an obvious thing to me. If there's a bloke sitting in the corner who's got dementia, we don't let him go home until his family are aware of it at the very least. That seems obvious. Well, I think I have to say that the family were aware that that person was going home and also the carers that were going in to support them were aware. But they just didn't there know when. one... Yeah, there was one. So they final, didn't know. There was one final phone call that didn't happen. Right. But that person was escorted home by an ambulance crew, and obviously no one is going to be left at home and just left there. This audit came about from asking the other organisations to let us know where there were things that weren't right. Because as you say, we can't improve things if we don't know what's going wrong and we're but really what, what went wrong you still not quite said and i understand that you keep saying we, we can't improve things unless we know what went wrong what went wrong in that instance there was an awful lot of different pieces of communication well, that let's go through the one but... it was the final phone call right to the family okay so the but person that isn't the carers were lined up and okay. the ambulance service were lined up and, okay but the, and the, no the... one's going to be left on their own no. in a home okay so but the family weren't told so then... has that person been disciplined who didn't make that phone call and as I say, we've investigated all of these issues, and there were very few for the number of patients that we discharged. Have they been disciplined? The issue is more about what are our systems correct and how can we ensure that we have the right system so we're not putting staff, making staff vulnerable from it being uh, one thing that can well, go Well, what wrong. about the families that are vulnerable? Has that person who didn't make that phone call been disciplined? I'm not sure that this is an issue of discipline. It's, a, it's an issue of supporting our staff and putting... What about the... You really said the staff. What about the patients? Let's support the patients. There's been a huge flaw. Someone who is very vulnerable has been let down. Their family have been let down. And yet you're implying that the person who's responsible for that uh, hasn't been disciplined. How is that acceptable? I think the first stage in any disciplinary issue is to ensure that we give feedback, we support the staff, we obviously support the patients. We don't want anything go wrong and our staff are really, really dedicated for what they do. And if anyone makes a, a mistake, if anything goes wrong, they really, really do get upset. And it's about going well, back to training. Well, but so they, they haven't been disciplined. I, I, I'm sure they do get upset and that's, uh, that's a terrible, terrible thing that, that a member of staff would be upset. Imagine how upset that person with dementia is or their mum or their sister or their, their their daughter that well, person so the person who, who messed up it hasn't been disciplined is that good enough part of the any disciplinary process the initial bit is to is that good enough and counsel I'm, I'm i don't think that that's necessarily the way that you would go around dealing with lots with these kind of issues it's about support and training for staff and it's about making sure that when the patient is taken home if something's not right that the ambulance crew will do everything they need to do to make sure nobody is left at home alone. Has so that person safeguard. has that person who messed up in this situation been uh, retrained? If there's been no disciplinary action, is, has they, have they been retrained? Obviously, we put training in place that when anything um, anything happens, so so they have been retrained. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that's good. What about leaving a, a cannula in? That's the, the little thing that goes in the, part, in the back of the hand, isn't it, for drips and, and, and things? Yes, yeah. That's been left, they've been left in a couple of times. Yeah, and again, you know, it's very difficult to, ex to go into detail on, on specifics. What we've done is look at the reasons why these things happen and look at whether our checklist procedures are uh, good enough and how we can support and retrain staff so these things don't happen again. Since this audit report came out, and it, it, it is quite disappointing, what changes have you made to procedure? A d number of things. As I say, we've looked at the checklist. We have been working really closely with, um, as I say, the local authority. We've made this one of our priority areas with the local authority and done some really good joint work to understand where things go wrong and how we can improve communication because a lot of it comes down to having really good communication. So that work's ongoing. And as I say, things it's having dedicated staff who are just focusing on discharge, who have the time to actually get these things done um, in, a, in the right way. Uh, so we're trying to look at increasing the number of discharge officers that we have. 
And listen, we're all human. We all make mistakes. The thing is, if I make a mistake at work, I play a Fleetwood Mac record instead of a Kinks record, or I go to the wrong caller. But in a hospital, there is no room for mistakes, is there? My little boy's about to go to hospital this week, and if I... If some of the things I, that's been happening in your hospital happened to him, I would be furious. I think, again, it comes back to getting this into perspective. The perspective is that someone with dementia was released without their family being told, a patient was discharged without a letter or medication, uh, and cannulas have been less left in people's hands. I, I know that the percentage is tiny, but that's not good enough, is no. it? No, and, and we're really sorry that those things happen, and obviously we don't want any mistakes to happen, and that is about getting these procedures right and the mechanisms there to make sure that we check everything and double-check everything and that we minimise or eliminate any of these problems happening. Karen, I appreciate your time this morning. That's Karen Ward, Director of Operations at Luton and Dunstable Hospital. This is Ian Lee on BBC Three Counties Radio. Ian's skiving this week, so he's asked me to sort out the podcast for him. Cheeky beggar. But speaking of beggars, Ian was asking, if you had one pound, would you give it to a beggar or a busker? If you head to our Facebook page, you can see a short video of Ian getting back to his busking roots with an original, um, hit, containing the sophisticated lyric, Oh, pretty baby, I love you so much. I know. I used to go busking, it was terrible. I once had a lunatic come up and threaten to punch me in the face. He pretended to be from the council. He flashed a bit of plastic at me. I'm convinced it was a library card. Having a library card does not mean you work for the council. It means you have access to council books. That's it. But how many times have you heard something funny, interesting or, or, or just stupid on the street? Well, Justin Dealey does all the time and uh, usually he's got a microphone in his pocket. Yes. Well, the other day, he he steamed into a row between an unlicensed busker and a beggar fighting over space in Luton Town Centre. Most normal people would just walk on by, but Justin, you you got involved, didn't you? (laughs) I did, actually. You idiot. I mean, fascinating. A a row between two people who were doing something illegal. It's illegal to beg in the UK, and it's also illegal to busk without a licence. Is it? I didn't know that. Yeah. You need a licence, of course you do. You can't just turn up on the street and start playing guitar. It's political madness gone wrong. It is, Pete. We see madness in this country, but it was fascinating to, to hear this because the homeless man was saying, look, you leave me alone, you've got a house, go away, this is my spot, not yours. And it was getting really, really heated, and I thought, I'm going to go over and have a quick listen to this. And um, when it all died down, that's when I got the microphone out. Um, I spoke to Anthony Grant, he's the homeless man, he's been homeless for seven months, and he, he's been telling me how he became homeless and why he's so angry with unlicensed buskers. Take a listen to this. Divorced my wife, got into another relationship, he went sour, and then I've just lost faith with people, to be honest with you. I just, if, not everyone, because not everyone's the same. If, you know, some people are nice and some people are horrible. I mean, night times when I sleep out sometimes, I get stamped on, I get beat up. You can see on the top of my head here, yeah? the last okay, thing yeah. I've, you know. So, what have you eaten today? No, uh, one orange. And that was since n- n- nothing yesterday, but an orange today. A lady gave me an orange just a minute ago. So you're here and you're begging for money because you, you need to eat? Yeah, I don't do drugs, I don't do drink, as you plainly see. I don't, no, no alcohol on my breath, no cans. I don't drink and I don't do drugs like most of the other people around here that try and beg. They beg. They beg because they need. They, they need their drugs or their money. I be, I beg because either if I can make enough, sometimes I can stay in a B and B. There's a uh, um, an easy jet. They know me very well in there. Your your big gripe is, is with Luton Borough Council because there are people here who are coming down and they're playing instruments and they're trying to get money and you feel that's wrong. These people should be having a license or they shouldn't be here. No, that's right. Yeah, definitely without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. Why should they be? I mean, I'm, I'm not doing nothing right. I don't, I'm not asking for anything that anyone, as in pretending I'm something I'm not. Do you know what I mean? When they're pretending they aren't. They, they, they have a house. Well, well, why should they Why should they be allowed to do that? Why can't, well, I'll have their house and they can do this. Do you know what I mean? I, I, quite happily, I'll have their house. I'd love to be able to have their house. I mean, what would you say to anybody who's listening to this saying, well, it's a bit rich, and obviously I'm sure they yeah, cool, they, they sympathise with you because you're homeless, but, but what you're doing is also illegal, isn't it? You're also begging on the streets, which you're not allowed to do in this country. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, and, and I don't want to do crime. 
I don't want to, in other words, I don't want to go out shoplifting, I don't want to go and rob people, I don't want to go and do things. The shopkeeper here know me well, here because I, I cause them no trouble whatsoever, and they you could ask them they're, they're, you're just doing what you can to survive that's why you're here you, you left with no option but to do this I haven't had no option to do it if I had an option to do it if, you, if, if I had more of an option to do it I, 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 I would do do you know what I mean just uh, lastly do you think that, that you can eventually turn your life around I hope so because if I can't then what's the point in living John's in St Albans morning John you've got a quid in your pocket there's a busker there's a beggar who are you going to give it to um, I was going to say the busker but I actually saw a busker in St Albans I was in St Albans on Friday so there is a connection um, to St Albans excellent and, and, and she was pretty terrible I think I gave her about 10p which wasn't <laughs> very generous well but... hang on if she was terrible why did you give her anything you should have just given her a dirty look no um, I felt a bit guilty I didn't give her a bit more but she wasn't very good otherwise I would have given her a bit more um, but uh, they, they vary in quality i mean they can be fantastic i mean they're regulated now on the london underground and sometimes they have sometimes it's got a bit commercial you know they've got sort of backing machines and things but you get sort of the students from the royal academy of music who are virtuoso violinists um and then you get sort of rent a bob dylan at the other end you know but if they can if they're competent you know i like listening to music so i yeah. don't care if they got a license or not if they're good um, I will throw a few quid in. I mean, sometimes you hear saxophone and things, oh. and jazz, and it can be... John. Yeah, sometimes it's terrible, sometimes it's great. I, I don't need to hear someone playing bad, out-of-tune saxophone over a karaoke tape of Careless Whisper by George Michael. Um, it doesn't do it for me! <laughs> no, not well. Uh, if they play anything by Wham, I'd probably shoot them, but that... <laughs> There's a fella in um, uh, uh, Tottenham Court Road tube station... Uh, and every time I pass him, he's and I've passed him quite a few times, he's always playing the same song, an old Calypso song called Matilda. He's always playing it. You think, oh, for goodness sakes, man, you've only got one tune. Do something else. I uh, know. You'd think that uh, there's quite a few There's quite a few good Calypso tunes out on there. You think he might vary it a bit. Um, as for the, the homeless, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's out to... I, I, Oh, you know, I felt really sorry for that fellow that you were talking yeah. to, um, that Justin had, it, it spoke to in Luton. I don't know how bad the problem is in Luton, and I suspect that organisations like Crisis and um, Shelter are, are doing essential work. I, I wonder, on a serious point, whether some of the changes to benefit, particularly the cap on housing benefit, is going to make the problem worse. I suspect it will. Um, and for all the people who sort of say, oh, well, these benefit people are scroungers, you know, at the end of the day, they're human beings and, and, and I, I would want to give them the benefit of the doubt. John, I appreciate your call. Thank you very much indeed. That's John uh, who, who saw a busker in St Albans. She wasn't very good. He still gave her ten pence. I don't know if that's worse than walking by, though. Is it, I, I, If I'm stood there playing, you know, I, and I like the phrase, rent bob if I'm there playing um, uh, all along the watchtower or blowing in the wind and someone chucked me a coin, well, thanks very much, mate. Oh, ten pence, you can take that back. I think I'd be more offended by the ten pence than just walking past. Also, they've invented Sony Walkmans now. You can have any kind of music. You know, Walkmans, iPods, isn't it? You can have any kind of music in your ears you want. Why would I want to listen to rent a bob Or uh, it, uh, There's no need for it. Lynn's in Hazelman. Morning, Lynn. Good morning. Lynn, who would you give the pound to? Um, probably the busker now, because we had a bit of a, um, an experience with, uh, um, beggars. Oh. Um, we were in Aylesbury a couple of years ago now, yeah. and, um, we always used to see the same guy, and always put money in his, you know, hat, etc. or I always used to offer to buy him a sandwich or a drink, but he always used to say, no, no money. Yeah. And I also think that was funny, because you can also do the suspended coffee, you know, in the coffee shops. For a behind. suspended coffee? Yeah, you can... If, when you go in and have a coffee, yes. you give them extra money so that uh, the homeless person can go in and get a coffee. Um, they do it in America. They do it everywhere now. Do they? I've never heard yeah. of a suspended coffee before. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you, right. can do that. you can buy them a sandwich or a biscuit or a cake or whatever. Oh, yeah. So they can go in like, you know, everybody else and have a coffee. Yeah. So that's what I would do now, but... Um, we were going back to the car park and uh, with shopping, and in front of us was the was the beggar, and they got in a better car than we did. So <laughs> I'm a bit more careful now, so I'd probably put the money in with the buskers. Hang on a minute, sorry. The the beggar got into a better car than what, and drove off. Yeah. And was yeah. driving it. Yes. It was their car. Yes. Well, how how did exactly. what what car was it? It was a it was a four by four, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> 
it's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. I didn't phone up the radio. You did. You get the story straight, Lynn, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Yeah, but he's he really got in a better car than we have. You do hear stories, don't you? And I always thought they were maybe slightly uh, m- m- mythical of, of beggars who would would, um, would beg, like this gentleman, and then would, would strip off and underneath they got a really expensive suit and jump into a car. But you're saying oh, this no, actually it, happened. Yeah, it did actually happen. It well. was in the, the hundreds car park in Aylesbury. Well, that's and, naughty. Um, yeah, it was naughty, and that really changed my thinking then. But buskers, though, Lynn, buskers are... They're flipping oh, rubbish, okay. aren't they? There was a really good guy actually... St- I mean, it takes a lot to get up and start singing or playing in front of people. Yeah. There was a brilliant guy the other day in Aylesbury. He was singing, and he was brilliant, so I put money in his pot. What, what was he singing Acapulco? Sorry? Who's that fella in the background? Is that your husband? Oh, that's my husband, yeah. What's his name? Daryl. Daryl? Daryl? <laughs> Daryl, shut up, mate. I'm talking to Lynn. Yeah, he said shut up. He's talking to me. <laughs> No, it's worked. Good. Sorry, house, yeah. well, so wait, he was what, he was just singing on his own, was he? Yes. What, he what, what was he singing? Bob Marley. No, he was singing. <clears throat> well, he was just singing all sorts of different songs. Okay. I'm not up on the really modern stuff, but yeah, he was singing. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Lynn, listen, let me talk to you next time. Can you can you do it in a different room from Daryl? Yeah, I don't. Do. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think you can do better than him, Lynn. <laughs> I really do. Thank you for the good sport, Lynn. Take care. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. It's been announced that disabled drivers using three hospitals in Hertfordshire won't now have to pay for car parking. West Hertfordshire Hospital's uh, NHS Trust have considered charging blue badge holders for parking at hospitals in St Albans, Hemel Hempstead and Watford. Steve's in Luton. Morning, Steve. Morning. What do you think about the parking in hospitals? It should be free. Why? It should be. Why should it? Why should, why, why should the taxpayer foot the bill for other people? It should be a, a playing field, just a level playing field. Well, hang on. If it, was, if it was free, free if it was free, then the taxpayer would be footing the bill. So you've just well, argued yeah, against yeah. yourself. <laughs> oh, no. You have, well, you have, Steve. You've <laughs> argued against yourself. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we, pay, we spend £15 billion to go in foreign aid. We can take the money out of that. No, no but then we'd send the taxpayer. The initial point was the taxpayer shouldn't foot the bill. We should all have free parking. So if we had yeah, we free, parking, free parking, the taxpayer would be footing it. the bill. I don't care about it. At the end of the day, there's but, loads of things we pay. I'm fed up. The taxpayer pays too much for everything. But we the taxpayer... <laughs> Steve, listen to yourself. You're arguing, you're, you're arguing up your own backside. You just said... Yeah, the, I just said, well, at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. I want free car But When I go to the hospital to visit someone, I don't want to go and get changed out want, of my pocket when I'm going to see someone. Right, that's you, what I'm on about. Not about the big issue of you the want, whole government and the whole country. OK, you want, so you want free parking in hospitals? Yeah, right. That's who's what I'm go- on about. Who's going to pay for that? I don't know. Some, well, they can find money for wars. They can find so the money taxpayer for will pay for it? Well, eventually, yeah. He's gone. <laughs> I, think, I think Steve may have just self-imploded there. I think that conversation may have been too much for him. Steve, thank you. If you've never called Ian Lee before, make sure you do it this week. But um, do make sure you've got a point. This is Ian Lee. On BBC Three Counties Radio. He does like to have fun with you all, and sometimes he winds you up. But above all, he loves torturing me. So, Catherine. Yes. Did you have a nice weekend? Yes. I don't care. My weekend. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. It's very rarely I have a really nice weekend. Okay, go on then. Okay, what did you do? Nothing. Okay. So, I I went glamping. Yeah. I know it does sound quite gay, doesn't it? When I saw the word glamping, I was, what on earth is this strange hybrid of hetero homosexuality? And it is a little bit, but it's fant- It's very camp, but it's fant- It's a posh tent, right? Mm. It looks like a circus tent. It's got a four-poster bed in it. Right, OK, that's probably the only camping I would do. Yeah, exactly. I, that whole thing of, of bivouacs. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. My little boy, three years old, he wanted to play with the big boys, OK? There were big boys there. They were like eight and ten. He said, Dad, I want to play with the big boys. He said, well, let's go. We, we can go and play with the big boys. To be honest, the big boys were little thugs. On the Saturday <laughs> night, they were conducting executions in a barbecue. Nice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so he, he said, I want to go and play with the big boys. I said, OK, what, how do you want to go and play with them? I want to do um, rollovers for them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably not the right approach. No, I know. I said, OK, well, let's, let's go and do rollovers. So I taught him how to do rollovers, and he went and did them with the big boys. They weren't interested. But <laughs> but four-year-old Erin was interested. Oh, yeah. She was interested. So they're hanging out all night, like, hanging around and playing and stuff, and it goes really well. But then the next morning, Erin pops over to our tent for breakfast, OK? She's four. He's three. She's forward, isn't she? I, well, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, and um, she... Uh, th- th- I, th- I turned around. They were having breakfast. Said, Where have the kids gone? Where have the kids gone? We couldn't find them. We went into the tent. Now, I, I don't know how you feel like this. They were both in bed eating brioche together. Ooh. Is that... I don't know. Is that appropriate? I don't know. I feel I should have done something. I mean, as a I, mother of daughters, I wouldn't have had that. No, I, as a mother of a son, I was thinking you. No, I wasn't. I was thinking that's terrible behaviour. <laughs> Oh, it's all innocent fun. Crumbs in the bed, though, not good. Oh, dirty. But your weekend was all right, was it? Yeah, Don't it was care. All right. Oh. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. This week, Ian admitted to cleaning his teeth only once a day. Yeah, once. He reckons he's got no fillings, but I didn't fancy getting close enough to check. But it seems he's not the only toothpaste dodger out there. Jane in Aylesbury gave us a ring with a story about the one who, thankfully, got away. Morning. Jane, do you brush your teeth regularly? Yes, I do. How often? Twice. How many fillings? Probably about four or five. Did you see? The proof positive. You only need to brush your teeth once a day. You will never have <laughs> fillings. You had a relationship with the dirty man, did you? Yes, I what, did. What happened? I, I mean in the, the uh, oral sense. No, hang on. Yeah, I yeah. mean t- teeth-wise. Yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> go on. He um, would not brush his teeth for weeks at a time. Oh, my God, weeks? Yes, weeks. Why? Um, just laziness. It's the same with the shaving, the same with the showering. Oh, was he homeless or something? No, he was living at home with his parents. Oh, for goodness. How, how old was he? 43. Oh, Jane, there's so much wrong with this. Yeah, yeah. A 43-year-old man living yeah. with mum who doesn't brush his teeth, the shaving, well, I can kind of dig, but doesn't have a shower. What, what on earth did you see in him? Well, uh, that's why... <laughs> oh. Uh, he was, um... Oh. Let's put it this way. It was a, da- a dating website, and oh. all the pictures. But, oh, yes, OK. And we contacted each other with emails, etc. Yeah. And the first time I met him, right, sitting across the table having a drink, the smell was absolutely horrendous. It was absolutely... He he was was, um, dry... I a beer passenger in my car, and the smell would last for two days. The smell from his mouth would last for two days. And did you marry this man? No, I did not. (laughs) How how long did you go out with him? Just about a year. (laughs) Just a year?! Just, just a year. Just Is that all? A year. Wow, gosh. Yes. I thought, um, he, he, he um, when he stayed over, mm. I even got him a toothbrush and stuff, and for him to, and he would not use it. He sounds like quite a catch, Jane. Why did you let this man go? <laughs> did you say to him, "All right, Steve, listen, I'll be honest, you stink"? Yes, I did. In uh, the end, yes. And his reaction? Well, that's me. You take me as you take me. <laughs> Oh, dear, Jane. Well, in some ways, thank you for that story. In some ways, oh, dear, why did you have to tell me that story? Before Ian sloped off to watch Jeremy Kyle in his track slacks, he handed the show over to Justin Dealey, along with some top tips and advice. Joined now by Justin Dealey. Morning, Justin. Hello, Ian. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Now, listen, I'm off for a few days. Mm. Uh, I'm off... <laughs> Sorry? Turn that off. A okay. bit of respect. Okay. I'm, I'm a, a professional broadcaster. I've been broadcasting for the last 15 years. I have worked with some of the country's greats. I know you have, but that email was sent to me by the BBC Complaints Department for uh, the next few days. Apparently, they can put their feet up and uh, enjoy life. Happy days. So I'm coming back next Tuesday, yes. inshallah. Now, all I want to say, Justin, is there are a few <laughs> tips I've got for you. Because yeah. I, I have heard when you filled in for me before, and I was disappointed that David Priever wasn't free this week. Yeah. <laughs> so just a few things, OK? Stop talking like a Cockney Barra boy, if okay. you can. Well, okay. I've injected class into this show. OK. Stop treating um, the ladies on the team as pieces of meat that are just there to get you cups of tea with three sugs. Are okay? you talking about me or are you talking about you? Here? I'm, I'm just I'm, a little, little bit confused. I'm, I'm addressing you. OK. 
Um, when the callers uh, call in, I like to treat them. I like to treat them with a bit of respect and dignity. <laughs> and I would expect you to. I don't treat them as, as, as listeners or callers. I treat them yeah. as friends. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. So I would um, like you to do the same. And also, just just try the night before. Try and read up on some of the things we're talking about. Some of the subjects. Some of the stories. So you don't just sound like you've just jumped in in the morning and reading the, reading a script cold without having any background knowledge about this the stories. This is a bit bizarre because Sorry? that's a feedback meeting we had two weeks ago. All these things were addressed to you. Uh, would I be correct in saying they that? They were addressed to me, Justin, yes. and I asked them to address them to me so that you wouldn't get upset. It, it was aimed at you, technically. Right. So okay. can, I, can I just ask, what, what, what ideas, what plans have you got for the next few days in the show? Just, uh, I'm just going to see where you're taking it. I've got absolutely no idea. Ah. At this moment in time. Okay. Play a few tracks in the first hour. Right, OK. It's Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. OK. You get no idea of the stories you're going to tackle. Keep it local uh, and vocal is the slogan here. Local, local and vocal. And vocal yeah. as it says on the back of those buses. Yep, OK. So you, if you can just get some nice local stories, juicy local stories are the mm, kind I like, mm. uh, where, where people are angry about something and, and they see you as a champion. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Is it, is it too late to get David Prever back? <laughs> Can we not ask him to come off his holiday? They pressed the speed dial number two to get through to David Prever, but sadly he couldn't make it this week. OK. He well, said, I just can't stand in for that Ian Lee anymore. I just, I just can't do it. Justin, just, just don't crash the ship, OK? No, I won't do All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. Ta-ta. Have a great time. There we go. Thank you. I do worry, and I apologise. It's, it's, it's unfortunate I have to take this time off. I, I apologise. Um, Justin Dealey... Uh, I do hope the show is still here. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. This is Ian Lee. On BBC Three Counties Radio. That's it for Ian Lee's podcast. He'll be back next week if he can be bothered, although I doubt very much he'll have had a wash. In the meantime, if you're really missing that smelly old sausage, then why not download all of his podcasts? They're all free and packed with great content perfectly linked together by Ian himself. OK, so it's average content dodgily linked together, but still, they're worth a listen. OK, so maybe not worth listening to them all the way through. But they are free. Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. 